Welcome on into One Nation. We got Trills and Wills with you here, and we're talking some exciting news about the Canadian national teams, in particular the men, Jordan, because they were back in action in CONCACAF Nations League. We haven't seen them since the World Cup. I miss them. <laughs> <laughs> Did you tell them that? Did you like write them a Christmas I said, card? I, said I can't it while wait I was for watching, you to be back. I miss you. I said it while I was watching the game. I was like, I miss them. I miss footy. Yeah. I miss, yeah. Yeah. Well, it, well, listen, it was exciting to see them. It was exciting to be back in studio. Uh, they're going to be back in action again March 28th against Honduras. We'll get into that. You're going to be with me in studio this time. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Brennan and KJ with me. I'm going to have you and Jimmy with me. Jimmy shared a story about how he had to replace one time a suspended manager and his suit was really tight so he had to stand for like 86 Funny minutes because if he sat down he'd split his pants <laughs> you ever have any uh suit when you put a suit on you're like oh boy, no oh well, no no funny enough the last time i split uh my pants was actually in the studio what yeah Here? it was but i i know how to play it off like you're not you're not gonna find me wait uh, was i hosting that day you were hosting what? um so when cavallini <laughs> when cavallini scored the penalty um, before the World Cup against was Japan. Yep. Okay. Um, I screamed and I just moved forward like this. I heard a little tiny little crack. <laughs> I said, oh, well, I'm glad this is the 95th minute. And uh, I just finished the show and just let the taper fall in my suit. And oh split. my God. But there's a little, a little tiny hole. Um, on the so side that's a, or on the bum? Straight down the middle, my oh, no. Straight, straight down the middle. So that's, that's a, that, well, thanks for putting me on the spot. <laughs> Because that's the last time I, I split didn't my eyes. think it was. First of all, I didn't think it'd be that soon. I think we all have stories. Like, I'm, like I had the side of my pants kind of, I don't know what Straight happened. down the middle. But I didn't realize we're talking like just a few months ago and I was in your presence and I didn't even realize it. And like I was, I, I left the studios a bit like this, <laughs> little penguin walk. Um, but it wasn't a big split, but it was split nonetheless. I was wondering why you were walking sideways. You didn't want anyone behind you. <laughs> <It's> like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> you were doing like the sidestep shuffle. I'm like... I was doing a little Cupid shuffle, no problem. It was because my pants were split. Oh, so, that so is that's too good. That's I love that. <laughs> All right, well, there you go. We just learned something new just a couple months ago. Jordan split his pants in studio Thanks watching for that, Andy. the Canadian men's team. Uh, you didn't split your pants, though, hopefully this time, because uh, splitting the defense here. Ooh, I like that. Ooh, Jonathan, David, Kyle, Aaron. Not, this is exactly what you want to see. Two of your strikers who are on fire with their club teams, mm. transferring that same energy on over to the national team. So they both get goals. Uh, Jonathan David scores first. We said it on the broadcast, it's no surprise. It was just not the greatest of games, and it's tough. Oftentimes, too, these, you know, especially for Canada, they're coming back for the first time uh, since November. Got to get a little bit of your rhythm back. You're also playing in another stadium, maybe the quality of the pitch is not what you expect it to be, or any, or also a lot of these guys coming from colder climates, that's mm -hmm. why the Canadian, their camp was in Miami, trying to get acclimated to the weather. I was asking Jimmy, maybe you can speak to this too, because you know, he asked that question to Herdman, where he was like, how much are you, you know, trying to help these guys not have the weather be a shock? Because some of them are kind of playing right now in fall-like weather, some, you know, still chilly billy, closer yeah. to, to freezing temperatures. Is it that much of a shock? I don't know, because when I get off the plane on vacation in Jamaica, <laughs> I hit the ground running. The heat revives me. <laughs> it doesn't bring me down. I'm free, I'm home. The hoodie <laughs> is off, and I'm sprinting down the beach. Like, oh, nothing man. is holding me back. But is it that much of a shock? Because yeah. I would think Pl going the other way is a shock. No, playing in the heat, it, it could be dreadful. If you're not prepared, if you don't have your coconut water, if you're not <laughs> hydrated, it is dreadful. But And then you also have teams now that like train the day before match day minus one at the same time. So you get acclimated to what the weather will be like, mm -hmm. how everything will feel. Um, but it will drain you, especially if you're not used to it. Um, so even training, if, you, if you're training in the summer and then you go somewhere that's humid, if you go to Mexico, it's like you can't breathe. Like It's so much on your body. Uh, so yeah, yeah humidity's Jim, a thing, yeah. Yeah, Jimmy was right about that, for sure. So it did take a little bit to get going, and then David scores in the 23rd minute, Kyle Lahren scores in the 43rd minute. No scoring in the second half, even though Curacao had gone down to 10 men. But I get it, sometimes it's, it's harder. Maybe you're not, A, maybe you're not pushing as much, but B, the other team suddenly goes into survival mode. Yeah. It can be deceiving sometimes when you take on a team who's a man down. Sometimes not that easy, but either way, they go on, they win. There's a lot of talk of lifting trophies. They're not hiding that fact. And now they have qualified, so they've guaranteed finished top two in the standings in their group, so they've qualified for Gold Cup. 
The game against Honduras is massive. They need at least a draw, but they have to top their group in order to qualify for the final four Nations League. So, you know, we'll talk about that trophy in just a moment. But do you think that given, and I know there's 11 guys on the field, but looking at who can score, do you think it is realistic that they can lift a trophy? Absolutely, it's realistic. This is a, a one-two punch that we've never really seen before for Canada. There are two guys you can look to that could bang in goals, bag a brace every single time. You look at the game, uh, seven shots in total, four on target, but two goals. Yeah, you can say whatever you want about the game. It's not the best, but you look at strikers all around the world, prolific strikers, they don't need many shots to score. You look at the goals that Kyle Aaron scored. You look at the goal that uh, David scored. It's just one touch, boom, picking out a corner. So this is beautiful. I, I, I'm remiss to think about 20 years ago, Dwight York, Andy Cole, Manchester United. Like they, They're almost opposites, but they didn't care who scored. It was just like as long as the goals are being done. Looking at David and Laren playing and also just the chemistry when they're moving, like David to set up uh, Laren for the second goal, you can just see as long as someone's scoring, as long as they're going together, that's all that matters. And I think, too, with uh, John Herdman, sometimes he might bench Laren and start David. I'm not saying they have to; those two have to play all the time. But I just know as a defender who has played, knowing that there's two guys that you have to worry about, hey, okay, I'm going to be tight to Laren, but then David might be free. It's just a nightmare. Um, and then that frees up Buchanan. It frees up different players. It frees up Davies. Just knowing that you have two bodies that are like poachers in the box. So I'm really excited to see these two go at it. I wonder if we will see a little bit more consistency and obviously fairness to Herdman during World Cup qualifying. He never had the same start in 11, but a lot of that was due to injury yeah. as well. So he had to make those adjustments. And there is something, I guess, nice about having that depth and having options. I keep going back to that window uh, in, in Edmonton where David did start against Costa Rica. He was the only one who scored against them. And then the next day against, or not the next day, but the next game against yeah, Mexico, yeah. he doesn't get the start. A little bit of a head scratcher, but that was also David saying, we trust Herdman and who he's going to put out there. And, you know, I, I say that because it leads into my next question, which is about Alfonso Davies. Mm. And I wonder if having him at wingback is something that, Herdman is going to stick with. Like, what we saw against Curacao, is that what he's going to stick with? Let's stick with Fonzie in particular. Or do you think that was because of the opponent and now maybe against Honduras, he plays higher up? Or do you think Herdman, because of the way Laren and David are playing, don't mess with that? You don't necessarily need a three up top. The two were just fine there. Where do you... Stop. I, I know this is just a conversation no. that's never going to die here. But do you like him better at wingback? Because I know we talked about left, yeah. like full on, full back. We talked about with him. But do you like him as wingback? I do. I do like him. I think it's easier for him to play wingback because that's what he plays and that's what he plays naturally at mm -hmm. Bayern. Um, it would be different if there weren't guys up top for Canada that weren't sure. sufficient and weren't scoring goals or weren't adequate. But these guys are. Um, Seeing Davies, I think, I think the bigger thing for me that, that, that points out is, or comes to mind, is that for Bayern, he is still a phenomenal player, but he's playing a role. For Canada, because there's so much hype around him, because he's so good, it could be like maybe he's a bit distracted, like doing a bit too much, maybe taking on a guy when he could play the ball, it could pass. But I like him 1v1 in situations in the wide areas because – his service could be exploited, him just taking the ball or running up the field. There's more times that that happens. Um, I think, though, with John Herdman, I think that he is a bit of a utility man, um, Davies. Like, he could play other spots. So maybe you want to do something different. With Honduras, maybe he's a guy that is playing higher up the pitch. That might be winger. But I wouldn't sacrifice David or Laren right now. I, I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. I'd play both of them because you know one of them or both of them are going to bang in a goal at some point. Yeah, exactly. I wonder, this is a little bit off topic, because I can't imagine Tuchel doing too much rearranging with the Bayern lineup, but we know Nagelsmann's now gone. Mm -hmm. Alfonso Davies, and rightfully so. Like, I was taught this long time ago, there's a player who demands playing time and a player who commands Ooh. playing time. Mm. Say it again. And Say it again. Say it again. <laughs> Come on, wheels. And I didn't know you're preaching. 
But when you command, it's because you're doing so with your action. Yeah. And you cannot ignore a player who's doing that. And that's what Davies did. He commanded mm -hmm. his spot in that lineup because of how he was playing. So I can't imagine things will change too much with Tuchel. Yeah. But as a player, again, you could speak to this better than me. Do you get a little nervous when a new manager comes on board? Oh, for sure. You have to, you have to earn your stripes all over again. And especially when you're starting because you have – Cancelo is probably his biggest test – Davies, uh, since he's been playing as a professional. He's been playing well. You have Cancelo coming in, you're like, ooh, am I still going to be playing the same way? But to his credit, he stepped up. Now with the new manager, obviously everyone knows Davies' quality. I think he just has to continue doing what he's doing. But you are always nervous because a new manager comes with the new ideas and you have to adapt, but good players usually do. Yeah, so you know sometimes we just kind of mess up people's <laughs> names? Yeah. Hey, Fonzie knows all about it. He's called Anthony... Davis, apparently, wow. he's called Alfonso Davy, Davis or David. Uh, I think you just called me Wheels. No chance. 100% you called me Wheels. Roll the tape. But let me tell you, roll it. You can't roll it now. I will forgive you because mm. uh, when I threw to the booth on Saturday. I called you Wheels just now? I'm pretty sure, I, yeah, pretty sure you called me Wheels. I think you, want, you wanted to say Trills. You called me Wheels. Why is Wheels in my brain? Because I called him Gareth Hume. On Saturday, ah. I, I wanted to throw to Gareth Wheeler, Ian Hume. It sounded right. I was watching at home. I was like, oh. but it's Gareth Hume. I made I, it's a you know the, the celebrity couple. Yeah, you hybrid. Kind of blend them. That's what I did. So maybe maybe that's what was on your mind. Charles, I'm so sorry. Is are we gonna do it? Ba ba. Oh, we did it. We, we just did. Yes. Wheels and wheels. I'm so sorry. I I don't know why I called you wheels. That's our handshake. If you missed it, it's we yeah. just we worked on it for a the podcasters. Bit. I'm sorry you missed that. You but, gotta watch the YouTube. But we worked on it. Yeah, you just caught That's okay. But, uh, yeah. Did you see the photo that they put up of Gareth Hume? I did. Would um, you go for a beer with Gareth Hume? It's a strange face. I'm not going to lie. I think it's, I think it's improved. <laughs> <laughs> improved for whom, though? For both? For one? Uh, Wheels, we love you, buddy. Hume, I don't know you like that, but uh, I love you too, man. Oh, man. Well, you got to go to the One Soccer Twitter handle. We put out a photo if Gareth and Humey... Had a baby, that is what it would look like at about 50 years old. So go check it out, yeah. And as I knew in my head when I, I'm like, go with the, with the call of the match, here's Gareth Hume, and, the, and then yeah. the little hamster in my brain went, and I went, nope, kind of messed that one up. That's all right. Uh, let's talk about some guys who were assisting here. Ooh. So first of all, and I, I did this on the broadcast, I want to give another shout out to Jonathan Osorio, because I know he's mm. worked so hard. It, it, I can't imagine what he was going through leading up to the World Cup when you're talking about a concussion and you're desperately trying to feel good again, but your, your head, it's on a different schedule. We all know this, right? It's not like a broken bone. Yeah. It's not even like a torn ligament where sometimes you can have this timeline. And he's been a little bit more forthright in talking about it now and how it was very difficult for him, loud noises, bright lights, even getting on planes. And he did go to the World Cup. That was great, but now we're seeing the real Oso, and he's mm -hmm. looking good with Toronto FC. He was part of that first goal as well. He was all over the pitch, too, so he's looking good against Curacao. But then the ball does end up on Richie Larea's boot. Richie Larea's just doing Larea things, and that was a sweet pass. I have so to much David. to say. First, I want to talk about Oso quickly. Yeah. Um, if you watch the game, he was just busy as well, looking like an old Oso. Old in terms of years back also. Just enjoying the game, running back, making sure he's in the right spots, pressing, sending guys on. I was happy. Looking at him, I said, yes, brother. You have so many more years left. You've been killing that TFC. You're a TFC legend. And also for Canada, you know you have unfinished business. Now, Richie, the assist. Mm -hmm. The word that comes to mind is tantalizing. Oh. It's a t yeah, I know. Teasing ball. Nice. So as a kid... When I played right back, way back in the day, when I kind of had wheels, hmm. um, I was told if there's a space between the keeper and the defenders, just whip the ball in there because that is a danger zone. You know for keeper huggers, Andy, mm -hmm. they can't come out if a ball is whipped in and they're basically just standing down their, their line hoping, making themselves big. That's what Richie does. When you're looking at this play when he does the first assist, he just says, hey, there's a bit of room right there. I'm just going to slap the ball across. And Jonathan David has a well with all to know, hey, I just need to be on the shoulder of my, my striker or my defender. I'm going to get it in. But that is such an inviting, teasing ball. Mm -hmm. And Richie does this all the time. Richie, Richie knows. And if you, if you look at the tandem of him and Bernadeschi at TFC, 
that right side is is something something sensational for sure. So if you're a TFC fan, maybe you're getting a little bit nervous because his loan from Nottingham Forest is up in June. Whew. I feel like June's it's just around the corner. It is. It really is. And you look at what he what he means to Toronto FC. He's a bona fide starter. He's their he's their go-to. And to your point, he's noticeable and he has an impact. Like, do you think he stays? Do you think he goes? Do well, you think I think another opportunity. I'm new to the party in terms of uh Gam and all all these titles oh, and all the. the I'm not stuff. new to the party and I still can't <laughs> wrap my head around it. Um, so I I don't know. I'll I'll go from his playing style. I think he seems comfortable here. I think he's doing well for TFC. I think that he could be one of the top right backs in the MLS. Like I think he's shown that already. Um, are they gonna keep it? I just don't know. But I I would like for that to happen. Even with Bernadeschi, you see little chemistry usually between players. You could see that something's working with those two. Um, Richie bombs forward. He gives Bernadette the ball. He doesn't get beat one v one. He's he's just he's a very solid right back through and through. Yeah, I feel for these guys. I feel for the decision they have to make because it's still quality in Europe, and even the like the allure, the possibility of playing in whatever top league. You pick your poison, right? Your Premier League, your Bundesliga, your La Liga. There are Canadian players who play in it. It is so tempting, and if you have an offer of some kind, why would you not want to take it? And every time you go to your national team, by the way, or you don't even have to go to your national team, you just hear John Herdman do interviews. Yeah. He talks about how he wants his players getting top minutes in Europe. But if you're going to go to Europe, but here's the risk you always run, which is what happened to Richie. So he goes to Nottingham Forest, barely plays. Yeah. They also get promoted, but then he's out, right? Like there's not – your your dream is not even – Realize, and I know there there is a camp that will say, but the experience of being there, being in that type of facility, that type of training, that type of environment, I get all that, but that means zip, zilch, zero if you're not playing. That's the way you develop, trails. Yeah. I got to say, trails, 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 trails. Like, no wheels, trails. That's how you develop, <laughs> right? Like, you can't, watching, even being in that environment, you have to be playing. And I also think about defenders, center backs, right backs, left backs. You want to be first choice. You want to be playing. Like, I know you're going to get a break here and there, but you you don't want to play one every 10 games. That's not how you're going to develop. You have to play week in and week out and get tested, having different wingers running at you, playing in different stadiums, playing in different environments. Training can only get you so much. And even any young player out there right now, choose a club where you're going to play. Um, and this is why I, I feel like the CPL is so crucial because you can go to other countries and maybe get lost. You can go to an MLS. That's happened group. to CPL players too, by Anytime. the way. Very true. Mm -hmm. But you have something now at home where you can go mm -hmm. and play and, and try, kind of dip your toe in and work at it and kind of get used to that professional life. But yeah, in your, in your early career, if you go later on, maybe post 30 and you want to you wanna go for mm -hmm. an experience or money, cool. But when you're young, those are the years you got to get better. And that's, that's, you can only do that by playing week in and week out. And I wonder for Osorio as well if that's just something that's been lifted off of his mind because he, was, he needed to sign a new contract with Toronto FC. Yes. And he had made it perfectly clear that he wanted to keep his options open to see what was available in Europe. So now you're dealing with this injury where you just don't know when you're going to heal. You're trying to make sure that you're on, still on the radar of John Herdman to go to the World Cup. Your contract is up with TFC. You're trying to explore things overseas. <laughs> I feel like it's all settled for Oso yeah. now. That's right? a, this is where he should be. Yeah, listen, and hey, I love Alistair Johnson even said it. He's like, do not knock Major League Soccer, please and thank you, right? Like the amount of you know playing time and experience that you get, and you look at uh, the Canadian national team squad and the players who have come from you know Major League Soccer. So absolutely, it's uh, and then also now to your point, CPL players at least getting called up. See, now that's when I think the environment is worth it, mm -hmm. right? Like you got a CPL player getting called up to the national team. That's a cool experience. That's something that can help you grow. So up next for the Canadians is Honduras. This is a team the last time they played them, that was a 2-1 loss. Um, so it's not like Canada has a hold on them just yet, right? They exercised some demons during World Cup qualification against Honduras, you know, in Honduras. And now you have uh, in Nations League a 2-1 loss to them. The good news is that the Canadians have put themselves in the driver's seat. They do just need a draw because they are ahead of Honduras on goals, on goal differential. Um, but what are you expecting from this side that, you know, you can't take too lightly? A win. I'm expecting a win. Okay. I'm expecting them to start better because they're at BMO. They're mm -hmm. at home. They have a crowd with you. Um, and last time they were at BMO, which was a year ago, 
Um, sorry, quick funny story Jamaica. I gotta tell you. Um, so I love my father very much, and he's the reason why I play soccer. But I was like, Dad, let's go to this game. We never go to games together. Mm -hmm. Life is just busy. I'm like, let's go to this game that happened a year ago. Canada versus Jamaica. I have Jamaican heritage. My dad was born in England, but his parents are Jamaican. Cool. So I was like, let's go see Jamaica mm -hmm. play Canada. And they win. They qualify. It's going to be an amazing moment. Never expected this to happen. We watch the game. I think Kyle Aaron scores first, like 13th minute. And there was a moment where Jamaica were playing okay. Like they were stringing the ball, like passing it, moving it around. And my dad, just being like a football fan, we're in a section of just red and white, like poutine and maple syrup, like everything Canada. And he's like, yeah, man, run, run, come on. I said, oh. I grabbed him. I said, Papa, we're not doing that today. <laughs> I said, this is the most Canadian I've ever been. I'm like, no chance. I was like, if you see black, yellow, green, I'm like, you're not cheering for them. I was like, this is a Canadian day. And he's like, oh, sorry, son, sorry, sorry, sorry. I got excited. Anyways, they ended up waiting for a no that day. But immediately, as soon as you said Bimo and we were talking about it, I was just like. Can't ignore history. It. That's part of your lineage there. I was like, no. That day, I was like, I literally just wanted to guzzle maple syrup, anything Canadian. I felt like if you cut me open, like a maple leaf would come out. I was super Canadian that day. What, are you like a Care Bear? <laughs> just have a maple leaf shoot out of your Care stomach? Care Bear, countdown. <laughs> um, what was your question? Sorry. I don't even know. Yeah. Well, Anyways. you know what you expect. You're expecting a win against Honduras. I'm expecting a win, and just for them to start better. This is not playing, no, no disrespect to Curacao and their, their pitch, but this is not a bobbly turf pitch. Mm -mm. This is Bima that you know, yes, it's cold, but this is an atmosphere where, where you last were, had that environment. Kids were, your kids were coming on the pitch. You just qualified a work for a World Cup. Something that, honestly, Canadians really didn't think that was going to happen for this men's side, and you, you guys did that. So I think ride those waves, ride that vibe. You know that you win. You're in a good position coming, coming into June. I wonder if uh, Herdman's going to make any lineup changes. We just talked about don't really mess with, you know, David and Laren up front. But yeah. I wonder uh, if he goes to a back four, back three. I do wonder if we'll see a Zator or Latoury. Alistair Johnson, you have to imagine, gets back in. Because speaking of, remember that last game against Honduras, he picked up two yellows. Herdman himself had picked up a red, which is why Herdman was not on the bench for Curacao, and neither did Johnston play. So he'll be available. You have to imagine he'll go back in. Yeah. So I just wonder if we see any kind of changes. Kone liked him. He got mm -hmm. the start. Atiba did end up coming on in. And from what I understand, I think there's going to be an acknowledgement of Atiba Hutchinson before the game, too, because he's hit 100 caps. That was 102 mm -hmm. when he took to the pitch against Curacao. So that'll be lovely. But I wonder if we're already seeing that torch being passed now, right? I, I don't think there'll be many changes. I think, obviously, Alistair is going to play, come in. I think there'll still be three in the back. But that who's playing next to him? Is it Kennedy? Is Victoria playing again? I don't think Victoria is playing again or starting again. Mm. Um, but I still think they're going with the same formation. You could see the glimpses of how they like to play Canada in terms of pressing and being active. I, I don't see them switching. Mm -hmm. I see I see them going for Honduras and going and being cutthroat. And I just don't see why you wouldn't play David and Laren up top. Um, but maybe subtle switches. Maybe if it's like Davies playing a bit higher up and Adekubi is coming in. Um, yeah, little things, but I don't see many changes. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Let's go overseas right now. Uh, and Where are we going? We're going to go uh, to England. Okay. And Is that your accent? We're going to go to Chelsea. No, it's horrible. <laughs> no, I will not. I will not do any accents. Uh, we will go to Chelsea. And I want to talk a little bit about, uh, so Kadisha Buchanan, as we know, joined Chelsea from her former club, Lyon, where she was dynamo. I mean, you know, four or five-time Champions League winner. Anyways, pretty incredible. Baller. Makes. Makes a move over to Chelsea. Right away is the starter, Jesse Fleming, her teammate there. Uh, they're coming off a 1-0 win over her former club in Champions League. But then in club play in the uh, Women's Super League, it's a 2-0 loss to Man City. So right now you have Manchester United and Manchester City who are leading the way at 38 points. But they're just behind. Chelsea is 37 points. What do you think is going to be seen as success for Kadisha Buchanan in her first season with Chelsea? Well, first things first, Chelsea for the past four years, since 2019, 2020, they've always won the league. Yeah, they had like a so, trouble a so year or two ago, right? Have you seen on the zone, uh, I think it's called One Team, One Dream? Anyways, it fall, they follow Chelsea. Yeah. And I'm an Arsenal man till I die, but I was like, man, Chelsea got something going on for the for the women's. They they're bringing in big Sam Kerr, like bringing in names, mm -hmm. Jesse Fleming. I was like, these girls can, these women can ball. 
I think the, the, the standard is winning the league. I know the Champions League, that is something that is coveted by many, many clubs and it's difficult to do. But I think the standard for, for Kadisha coming in is you got to win the league. Yeah, well, and I think as well, it's, it's getting those consistent minutes, which is what she does. And, and I know that your goal scorers, your forwards, your flashy players, they always get the limelight, but there is something about Kadisha Buchanan that just draws your attention to her because she is not afraid. Sometimes it, she, she walks that line though, right? With those tackles, because they have to be timed perfectly. A woman after my own heart. Because I saw, I saw her first game with Chelsea. I had to tune in, I had to see yeah. what she was doing. And she was looking great. And then there was like a mistimed tackle. The other team was awarded a PK. I'm like, no. But, but that is the risk reward you get with her. Because more times than not, those tackles are timed perfectly. Yeah. They're great. She makes a save. Goalkeeper, stay chill. And that's what you want in front of you, especially on the, on the national team. Kaylin Sheridan, that's exactly what she wants. Get that partnership back again with Vanessa Gilles. Um, who's been loaned down and playing for Leon, who she ended up defeating uh, in that leg one of Champions League. So well, if that partnership is flying high, then the national team mm -hmm. for Canada is really looking good. But, you know, I think, it's, I think it's a nice experience because playing in the French League, now you're playing in England, right? Like the heart, the heartbeat yeah. of football. That's just going to elevate her game even more. You said it perfectly, Chose. You really mm -hmm. did. Oh, is that it? Yeah, sorry. I, you just completely agree with me? You're just like, I, no, that's I do. It? That. <laughs> All right, thanks. When you're talking about Khadija, I was like, yeah, no, she does play that. She does kind of walk on that, that tight line. But I can't really judge her because that's the way I played. Oh, I, it's I gave good. some pens away, I but I also defended with my heart. So we talked about, um, you know, big loss, though, for the Canadian squad with Janine Becky and the ACL. You know, we also know that there's been some other injuries to Nichelle Prince, Deanne Rose, and Jade Riviere. But Jade is Riviere's back on She's the bench back. with Manchester United. Is that making you feel good here now to see Absolutely. her like to see her back and to see again? I always equate it to the national team that the players are coming back from mm -hmm. injury. Young, promising defender, yeah. um, Markham Bourne. So, you know, I always love an Ontario, an, an Ontario talent. But, yeah, she, she's sensational, and I think the sky's the limit for her the, in the way that she plays. Yeah, no, I'm really excited to see that. So the Canadian women will be back in action April 11th when they take on France. We are still keeping our fingers crossed, hopefully, because there's been that talk of having that one more game yeah. before they leave. Because you want nice to see them to play. Send them off. Yeah, it would be nice to, to send them off. And it would, yeah, you got to get people to show up. Mm -hmm. Are you a little confused? Oh. So the game, if I go back a little bit, if I backtrack a little bit to the men, I didn't, I didn't even know if I wanted to touch on this, but I don't know how you kind of ignore it. It looks like the top portion of BMO Field is going to be sectioned off because of... The wind? Uh, yeah, I wish it was the wind. <laughs> the lack of ticket sales. Ah. You know, I was kind of surprised by that. So if, if I go, so I went on Ticketmaster and I saw that the lowest tickets are $65. I'd pay 65 And then the highest is 285 I don't have 285 Okay. I don't know. I, like, I, I, I hate to tell people, ah, it's not expensive, I'll spend your money. Yes, it is, because especially if you're parents who maybe want to do an outing yeah. with the kids. It's expensive. That gets expensive fast, because parking, they like to gouge you uh, when they know it's an event happening. So I get it. It can get expensive in a hurry, but I don't know. This I is mean, the first time playing in BMO in a year. I feel like, why, why are we jacking up the prices? Like, uh, Well, that's another question, I guess. And I guess there's more to it than just like, why aren't you supporting your team? There's more to it, right? Yeah. So how do they come up with pricing, right? Who comes up with that? Uh, I'm assuming you come up with pricing to help cover the cost of putting the match on, or else you're in a deficit, and then what are you doing? The whole point is to make money, right? So what are you, like, what's the, what's also the relationship you have with BMO Field, right? What, what's the deal that you've cut with them? How much money do you get? Do you, what money do you get from concession? I don't know. Like, how do you set the price? And then, yeah, like, where are, where are people's minds at? Is it strictly a ticket thing? Is it uh, feeling a little shunned? Because, again, we know what happened in Vancouver and the we Iran game, it, getting rescheduled. It could easily be that. Panama getting, you know, the players boycott that the 11th hour. A lot of fans still showed up at the stadium, were upset about that. I don't know. I don't know. But it's just, it's a little heartbreaking to see that this is the first time you're also going to see them since the World Cup. Yes. On home soil. This should be a nice little, not victory lap, but it should have that type of vibe. Yeah. Yeah. I remember a year ago, freezing in the, in the cold with my dad. It was Beautiful the best day. feeling ever. Best feeling. 
Yeah. I doubled up my socks. My dad didn't, so I felt bad. But <laughs> no, you didn't. I did. I no, said, didn't. I said just warm, and he came like he was Jamaican. He came with ultra boots. Yeah, you know what? So did the Jamaican players. <laughs> they didn't have any jogging pants. That's it for us here on One Nation. Hope you enjoyed it. Check